Hey, this is Patrick from Frontly. Today, I'm excited to show off our new custom form builder, which allows you to use our new standalone input blocks to create a totally custom form. So right now on my screen, I have the standard form block, which you can find right here. Um, this is what you might be familiar with if you've ever used Frontly and our forms. Uh, they can be customized. You can change the types of the fields, but the actual format and the visual style of the form is fairly static. There aren't a ton of customization options. One of the big limitations being that the form block is always based on your spreadsheet or connected data source. So what I mean by that is in my data source, I have title, image, and content fields. And because of that, I'm able to have those fields in my form. So I've turned off my image field, but these are my form fields. And all I can do is really turn them off or turn them on. And um, this is just a little bit inflexible. For the most part, it's exactly what you need. And because of that, we're able to automate the connection between those fields and the submission action. But if you wanna do something a bit more complex, we now have the option for standalone input fields. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this and I'm gonna show you a new block that we've added, which is an instant form using this new functionality. So you can see we have two here. We have the AI generator form and then the custom form. For now, I'm gonna select the custom form just so I can show you the basics. You can see here, it looks pretty similar to uh, the other form, except I've been able to make the inputs really large and I can also make them smaller too, but that's one of the cool things about this is that each of these fields is actually its own separate input. So I've been able to customize some of the styles here, like the font size, the font weight, um, things like that, even stuff like padding and margin and distance between other elements on the page. And so as you can see here, um, I've added fields first name, last name, email, favorite color, and even a, uh, a checkbox or a switch toggle here. None of these are directly connected to a field in a database or anything like that. Obviously in the end, like you will wanna send that data somewhere. And so probably the fields should be at least correlated to something, but there are cases where you just want to have maybe a, a switch on a page or you know have a dropdown field and then be able to use the value of that dropdown in your app without submitting it somewhere. And so this new way of dealing with these custom input blocks is, uh, yeah, it's just a new flexible way to handle that. So I wanted to show you this so you can see um, that this is literally a button block that I've added inside a column. And then here I have a row with two columns in it with a text block and an input. And so you can see like I can really make this whatever I want. If I wanted to, I can just click on this and I can delete it. You can see that it's it's really just um, rows and columns and then inputs and text. So what I'm gonna do uh, one more time is I'm gonna delete everything on the page and then I'm gonna build a simple version of this from scratch just to really hit this idea home. Um, so I'm gonna add a column and all that's gonna be in my case is just a container. It's just gonna be this white container and it's gonna have nice 20 pixel padding around it. And then I'm going to go into my more blocks browser and I'm gonna scroll down. So we have these four new blocks here, input, text area, select, and switch. I'm gonna start with input. So I'm gonna add an input block and you can see it's just an input. There's no automatic label or anything because we want this to be totally customizable. If I wanted to add a text label, I just add a text block above it and you can adjust things like spacing. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna give this a label of um, company name. And so just like any other text block, I can adjust the size, the, the font weight. I can make it really bold if I want. Now, because I'm inside a column, I also have control over the spacing. I can either use this item spacing here, which sets an automatic spacing between all the items, or I can get rid of this entirely, set it to zero, and then I can customize the spacing on a per block level. So let's go to my input and I'm just gonna add a margin of five pixels or maybe 10. So there, let's say I like that. And then what I can do is I can go and I can add another block. So I'm gonna add a uh, select block this time. And 
just like I did with the input. I'm just going to chuck it in there. I'm even going to copy and paste my label and then just drag it. Um, I'm going to click on it and drag. Oh, it's kind of difficult with these text input fields. You got to be dragging it at the right time. There you go. Okay. So I'm going to set a 20 pixel margin above that label. And then I'm going to do another 10 pixel margin here. So anyway, you can, you can see how unlike the form, you can kind of put together your own very custom submissions here. And of course, uh, because this is a select dropdown, I can add options here, um, you know, add some fruits, apple, banana, pear. And so there we go. Now, if I go and um, preview this in, in my live app, still very, very simple. It's full width, which is probably not what I want, but you can see I've got my options here. Oops, looks like the fields are connected because what I didn't do is I didn't add a field ID. This is a critical part of the new block builder. So like I mentioned before, these fields aren't connected to anything by default. They're just these standalone blocks that um, without giving a field ID, they don't really have an identity essentially. And so I want to call this um, favorite fruit and I'm going to just call the field ID fruit. And then in this case, I'll call this company. And um, this is just, again, this is like my own reference label. So what that means is if I want to use the values of this form submission inside an action of some kind, this is how I'm going to reference it. So I'm going to go and I'm going to add a button. And what's cool is the button doesn't have to be like inside this column or anything like that. It can be on the other side of the page, but let me just put it below and I'm going to say, um, submit form. Again, because this is a button block, I have a lot more flexibility over the, um, the styling of it. So I can make it a little bigger. I could even adjust the, you know, I could adjust the colors and stuff like that. So this is just for a much more flexible experience. Now, just to uh, kind of prove a point here and also to make this look a little bit nicer, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to maybe drag this button inside here. I will set some margin and then I'm gonna go to my page styles. Ah, there it is. And I'm gonna set the page to a maximum of 600. So that's just an easy way. Um, if you want the entire content of your page to be limited to a certain width, then that's a nice way to do it because you don't have to set that width on every single block. So I'm gonna refresh this page and you can see that's like that. Um, if I want, I can actually even make this a full width button now because because of the way that I did that. And probably I'm gonna increase the size of this. I'm going to add some nice, oops, add some nice padding to my inputs. I just want them to be nice and large. I, I think that if I'm gonna have a form that's going to take up you know, the majority of the screen, then I don't want it to be these little input fields. So that's nice. And last but not least, I'm gonna show you how to actually use the values of these inputs in a custom action. It's so easy. So all you have to do is you have to remember the field IDs that you gave to your fields. Mine were company and fruit. So let's just say for simplicity's sake, I wanna put these into a notification. So all I have to do is use the form.company, which is the field ID that I gave, or form.fruit, which is the ID I gave to my second field. So you can use this form variable in any action field inside anyone that has this little injector here. Um, you can use that when you're triggering an action on, on your page. So basically any action that you're gonna trigger on your entire page, if there are form inputs, like these custom input blocks on the page, you can use that um, in the action. So again, more flexible in that way. It's you could have a you know a table row click action that for some reason is using the value from an input field that's somewhere on the page. Uh, so I'll leave it up to you to be creative and come up with reasons for for needing that. But let's just go back to my page one last time, and so I'm going to enter my name or company name, Apple Computer, and favorite fruit. Well, 
apple. I didn't actually mean to do that, but I guess I had apples on the brain. So uh, custom form, you can see it says Apple computer and Apple. So there you go. I've created a completely custom form with an input and with a select. Now there are two other field types. So we have the text area, which is very, very similar to an input, but it's the expandable kind. And so, um, all right, let's just grab this there, add some more margin, and we'll just uh, call this company description. So do that. So it's, it's a bit tedious if you're setting this up because of course you do actually have to set the style settings. Um, if you were copying and pasting fields uh, to duplicate them, then that would that would make it a little faster but um, if they're different then you won't be able to do that so you can see here that because this is a text area again I'll call this description and um, I can set let's see I think I can set oh yeah I can set the height I believe so there you go so <clears throat> unlike the input field the text area is like is the long text input so that's pretty useful for certain situations, especially if you're using the AI generator. And then um, last but not least, we have the switch. So this is a very simple component. All it is is the uh, is the little switch toggle toggle switch thing. Um, so I'm going to do this one last time, and let me add some margin here. Now again, this is customizable in size because it's a standalone input. We're able to give it more more uh, custom style. So I'm going to set the width to 60 and then I'm going to set this ball height to, hmm, yeah, sure. Maybe I'll even, yeah, I'll just leave it like that. So anyway, nice large um, input field there and, you know, you can call this whatever, agree or, you know, whatever you want to do. So this is a true and false. The value will either be false or true depending on what the user selects. So there you go. This is a completely custom form. And yes, you can use this to trigger um, AI actions. So one of the blocks that we have actually handles a complete uh, complete AI action. I'll just go and show that as well. So I'm going to, um, I'll just create a brand new page. Um, and oh, AI action. Okay. so. One of these new marketplace blocks we've added is uh, another custom form, but it's called the AI generator form. So this one's really cool because it also comes with this section below. And so without going too deep into the details, I'll show you the button click action. So we have an open AI request and it's using my two fields. There's only two fields. I created one called tone. That was the field ID and then one called topic. So I've added this very simple prompt, generate a blog post with a variable tone about this topic and then I have the form variable there too. So I've defined that I want the title and content fields to come back so the AI knows to generate these two different fields of data and I've explained a little bit about what they are. Then I've used the local state action to grab the previous step which is this action steps variable and set it to the local state and so that's all I had to do here. And then in this section, um, it's, both of these are set up in a way, this whole section here is set up to appear or disappear based on whether there's content. And this form is set up opposite. So once there's content generated, we'll only see this second section here. And when I hit generate another, then I clear the local state. And so I set both of these values to empty and then that shifts the page back to the default. So I'm gonna hit preview. I can show you in real time here what this is. So you can now install this with one click. It's a fully functional AI blog post generator that is actually just a couple blocks connected. So it's not even a whole app template. You can just install this into any page and it'll be fully functional. So let's say I wanna generate, and keep in mind, you can customize any aspect of this. It definitely does not have to be for blog posts. Um, basically just change the prompt, change some of the text and you're, you know, you're off to the races. So I'm gonna generate a blog post with a sarcastic tone about, um, you know, uh, how to build an app with no code um, using Frontly. I, I don't even know if AI knows about Frontly, so we'll see what happens here, but that's beside the point. Okay, great. So here we go. We've got a cool 
um, little blog post here. This is totally custom. This is just some text blocks. And then I've got my results here. So if I hit generate another, it clears the local state, goes back here, and now I have this wonderful custom form. So anyway, that's plenty long of a video. I hope this gives you some understanding of how to start experimenting with these, with these new customizable features. Thanks for watching.